Would uh, James William Riley please come up here? No one could predict when Bill Riley was born in Amherst in 1950 that he would one day develop into the powerful 5'11", 195 pound NHL right winger he was to become. Once he got started into sports, however, it didn't take locals long to learn that they had a very special hockey talent in the making. In 68, when he reached an age where junior hockey became a possibility, he not only made the Junior B Amherst Ramblers, he was voted their most valuable player. He then moved up to play in Junior A for the Halifax Atlantics. The reality of making a living reared its ugly head, and he went west to find work in a British Columbia company town. He joined the local team, the Kitimat Seniors, where he was their high scorer for four years before turning pro and moving on to the Dayton Gems. In the International League, his sterling play in leading them to the league championship in 1976 opened the eyes of scouts from the Washington capital area, as their scouts were then seeking talent for their fledgling NHL franchise. Washington was especially interested in Riley in an attempt to lure some of the District of Columbia's black population into the seats. It's true that black players Willie O'Ree and Mike Marson preceded Riley into Major League Hockey, but they never really made it. Riley was the third black in history to play NHL hockey and the first to really make the grade for more than a short look-see. He was also the first Nova Scotian black to do so. No one worked harder than Bill Riley. He was called up to the Washington Club near the end of the 74-75 season, but saw limited action. Midway through 76-77, he was called up again and responded with outstanding, very physical play. It saw him chosen Washington Rookie of the Year, scoring 13 goals, helping out in 14 others for a career high in the NHL of 27 points in 43 games, despite spending 124 minutes in the penalty box. For the few non-sport fanatics here tonight, if your team scores more goals while you're on the ice than does your opponent, you're considered a plus player. Bill Riley was the first plus player in the history of the Washington Capital franchise. He should have arranged to have his mail delivered to the penalty box the following year as he spent another 125 minutes scoring 13 goals and making 12 assists for 25 points in 57 games, despite the team's continued dismal record. New management took over in Washington. They were interested in youth only. Riley, then 28 years old, saw only limited action, scoring twice and assisting twice in 24 games before he was moved to the American Hockey League. He spent 78-79 with the Hershey Bears. His totals that part season were 15 goals and as many assists in 51 games. He remained aggressive enough to log 118 penalty minutes. John Ferguson liked what he saw in Hershey and Winnipeg called Riley up in a 1979 expansion draft where he played until Toronto signed him as a free agent in 1981. Because he'd been away from Nova Scotia for so long, despite playing in 138 NHL games, local Amherst residents didn't realize Bill Riley was in the bigs until they saw him on hockey night in Canada and heard Bill Hewitt praise his dogged forechecking. Riley finished his AHL career playing for Moncton and Halifax. His New Brunswick Hawks won the AHL championship in 1982. The following year, he was playing coach of the Moncton Alpines. Very much like Jackie Robinson's early years in Major League Baseball, Riley had heard hundreds of racial remarks made by fans throughout his many seasons, though he'd had very few such incidents with opposing players or coaches. Playing for the Hawks in a preseason game in Kentville, Riley was making mincemeat out of John Brophy's Voyageurs when an incident took place which put Riley's incredible self-discipline and maturity to the test. Brophy, as you know, never far from hysteria while coaching, jumped up on the boards and made some racial remarks. Riley, as he had throughout his career, ignored them. Ironically, his teammates frequently got more upset with the remarks than he did. Riley was quoted after the game saying that he thought he was in Nova Scotia. He was surprised to learn that he probably was in Alabama instead. After the game, the Daily News called Brophy. They told him Riley was thinking of taking out a lawsuit with the Human Rights Commission. Brophy said he'd never made such remarks and that he'd always thought Riley was Irish. <laughs> Riley later joined the Voyageurs, became Brophy's captain and subsequent close friend. While with the V's, despite being in his mid-30s, Riley topped his previous professional totals with 31 goals, 33 assists, and in his role as captain and senior enforcer, spending 157 minutes in the penalty box. 
He planned to retire for good, but he was talked into joining Charlottetown during their 1985 Hardy Cup drive. After that season, he decided once again it was time to quit. Actually spent the year out of hockey, but then he got the call from the St. John's Capitals in the Newfoundland Senior League, where he became playing coach from 1986 to 89, and then joined the Port of Basque Mariners in 88-89 for their successful Hardy Cup playoff series. Riley's also been a very successful coach by any standard. He took the Moncton Midland Hawks to the Maritime Junior Hockey title in 1984. He took the 1990 Amherst Ramblers, who'd been the weak sisters in the league, to the Maritime and Atlantic Junior A championships in his initial season. He's coached as well the Amherst Mooseheads and the Moncton Wilsons. He often regrets not accepting pro coaching offers, but his love of kids for his now grown children, Carla Tracy and Bill, and the young men on his teams was enough to keep Riley in Moncton and Amherst after his long pro career. In addition to his Rookie of the Year award at Washington, he had his sweater retired in Moncton and was honored with the AHL's prestigious gold skate. His leadership knows no equal. Bill Riley, ladies and gentlemen, can look back at having cap been captain of two pro championship teams, the Dayton Gems and the New Brunswick Hawks. Many of you remember him as captain of the Nova Scotia Bees here at home. He scored 30 goals or more in five straight AHL seasons. In his five years in the NHL, he played in 139 games, scored 31 times, had 30 assists for 61 points, despite spending 320 minutes in the penalty box. Our sixth inductee this evening was a spirited, hardworking, hustling, very physical hockey player. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the very best players to ever have come out of Nova Scotia. A wonderful role model. We're proud to claim our own, Mr. Bill Riley. Double billing uh, for Peter Hazelhurst of Coca-Cola. Peter, would you join us, please, to make the presentation to Bill? Congratulations, oh, buddy. Thanks very much, Pat. Much has been said and written about Bill Riley, black hockey player. Bill Riley, I'm sure, would be much, pref much preferred to be remembered as a great hockey player who happened to be black. Well, I suppose so. I mean, I'm always proud to be in black, and I was proud to be, sure uh, proud, proud to be in Nova Scotian. So, and I was, you know, very happy and fortunate enough to live my dream to play in the National Hockey League. You know, I was looking at that, some of the pictures of that Washington team. That was a dreadful team. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the worst team ever put together. I'm glad they were bad. That way I played in the first line. So you know how bad they were. <laughs> Not only that, he did. You scored 13 goals in the National Hockey League in each of two seasons. That was a, that was a tremendous accomplishment with that team. Yeah, without question. And like, I only played like 40 games one time and I think it was 47 or 50 games the next time so uh, I was thinking back on it to Scott Fraser from up in Moncton scored 10 goals for Edmonton in the last year and a half a season and he just signed for 1.4 in uh, New York. Born, born what 30 years too soon? Yeah. Well I, I guess I made more money than Gordy Howe did when he started so <laughs> he got a jacket for signing. I, I, I'm not sure how many fans, uh, black fans they, they, uh, the Capitals uh, attracted in Washington that year. But one thing is certain, Bill Riley plays the trail for a lot of people. Because today, I think there are, what, uh, 12, 15 black players in the National Hockey League? Yeah, without well, question, like there, there were, you know, there were a lot of things that happened that uh, I could, probably could have raised a fuss about, but if I had a, I, I don't think that the other kids would have got the opportunity. So I just sort of rolled with the punches and, uh, you know, I enjoyed going to the rink every day, and uh, I just couldn't believe that somebody would pay you to play hockey because I think it's the greatest game in the world. You know, much, much is, is said, and with all due respect to our dear friend Willie O'Ree, who was the very first uh, black player in the National Hockey League, Willie played part of a season with the Boston Bruins. You were there for five years with Washington and Winnipeg. That was a long stint. 
Yeah, it, it was great, but I was very fortunate. I had a lot of support from my, uh, from my parents and from my family, uh, my wife Joanne and my uh, three kids. And uh, I also had great teammates. I mean, to be successful uh, in any sport, uh, you have to be able to get along with people. And uh, so it, it's a team game, and I think that's what will make you success successful if you plug into the team program. You also played for some very interesting coaches. John Brophy mentioned it. Bro, uh, Tommy McVie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are... Those Who really are. gave you the break, didn't he? Yeah, Tommy gave me the opportunity. Like, uh, he just... Uh, when, I, when I first went to uh, Dayton to training camp, I was... Like, you know, I was just a hillbilly from Mammers. I didn't... Uh, you know, I was, I was afraid. Uh, uh, there were so many guys there. I was looking at the stats and, you know, guys from Major Junior with 40 goals, 50 goals, 60 goals. And, you know, I'm going, oof, you know, this is, uh, is going to be tough. And... Uh, but I just kept working and working and working, and uh, there was guys there with a lot more talent than I, but uh, I just felt that, uh, at, you know, after I got a taste of it and I played a few exhibition games, I said, hey, you know, I, I'm as good as these guys. I think I can play here, and uh, so Tommy was real, you know, Tommy was really good to me. I, I think the world of man, and uh, John Brophy, you know, you can say what you want about John Brophy, but his bark's louder than his bite, and he's a great, uh, great uh, coach, great uh, Nova Scotian, and uh, I remember the year I played with the uh, Nova Scotia Vs, uh, the guys from Montreal were always telling uh, Brof who to play, and we were always, Dave Allison and myself, uh, were always telling him, Stan Hineker from Nova Scotia, Mike Jeffries, I mean, he gave all these guys an opportunity. Whitney Richardson. And Whitney Richardson. Those kids would have never got an opportunity to play if it had not been for John Brophy, so I have nothing bad to say about John Brophy. Bill, are you going to get back into hockey quickly? Uh, maybe after hunting season. Okay. <laughs> all the best. Congratulations. A well-earned uh, recognition. Bill Riley, ladies and gentlemen.